All right, today we're gonna do a tier list of all the tribes. Let's start it all off with the zombies. Uh, care well, you know, the zombie decks, they've got a lot of good tools. They got the carrion feeder. They've got what? They have Geralt's messenger, if I can add that one. That sometimes can be used to combo off. They what? They got uh, grave crawler. They've got some good stuff. They got some good stuff. There is, however, one downside to the zombies. They don't block. So they're actually really bad in some sort of racing war with uh, other other tribes, other creature-based decks. No blocking. You may cast Gravecrawler from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. This card is a house versus any decks with removal. Let me tell you that. They try to spend any removal on this grave crawler. They are wasting their time and their cards. Doesn't does not uh, completely useless. But in a complete war of you know one deck versus another. Uh, this deck doesn't have a whole lot of... I mean, you can have removal if I wanted to add it, I guess. But generally speaking, if you want that synergy of the of the zombies, you gotta have a lot of zombies in the deck, so... Doesn't exactly... Anyway, it doesn't bode well versus other creature-based decks. But it's still, like, a really good tribe, as, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so now let's put... That's where we're gonna put zombies. I think... I think we can safely put zombies at A. It's a really good one. And I think what we're how we're gonna rank it is S. S tier wins big time. Wins big events. Is very relevant in the history of Magic the Gathering. A tier. It's been around and it does some good stuff. Like it does good things. But then we got B, which like, hey, th there's they're not really doing anything. And then see, they're like, they lose indeed. Like, who heard of this tribe? Who heard of it? <laughs> the Zybers and the Eldrazi. Broman uh, suggests, let's look at the Berserkers. What's a Berserker? Give me one. What's a Berserker? What are like some good Berserkers? I've never like he, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is like a tribe I've never heard of. Attacking creatures you control have double strike, first strike. Is it all elf berserker? Elf berserker. Human. Whenever berserker attacks, the next spell you cast this turn costs one less to cast. This is like a creature type that I don't even notice, even that even exists. Lightning berserker. One red. Human. Berserker, one red, lightning berserker gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Basically it has um, fire breathing. I'm not really getting a good feel for what this tribe does if it does anything at all. Whenever Highland Berserker or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may have ally creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. He gets paid by the axe. I don't know this tribe. Is there any, hold on, is there, well, first off, yeah, I have no idea what this tribe is. You know what, we're gonna, this is gonna set the standard for D. I never heard of you as a tribe. I've never heard a deck made out of this damn thing. And it's like, it's not, if someone made an, if someone made an EDH deck out of you, then, I mean, good, I mean, is this all the cards? Just out of curiosity, let's look up creature. Berserker. What are all the cre- these- oh, there are like a hundred of them. There's not nothing. It's not nothing. All right. <laughs> but all right, well, we're gonna move on. Alex with the super chat. Rats. Ah, yes. What's a good iconic rat? You know, if you suggest a creature type, also suggest an iconic creature with that one. Uh, I know... Ravenous? No, Ravenous? Well, I mean, that's the first one that pops up in my head, but I don't think this is like a key rat in the rat tribe. Uh, black, one generic, one, one. When Ravenous Rats enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card. So, rats has a little, th some stuff going for it. There was a, um, there was a popper. There was, a, was there a tier one popper deck that was rats? Pack rat, best rat. Unfortunately, pack rat not in 
the uh, pop or rats deck, but rats is definitely very, very... There's some rats, there's some rats deck out there. Rats are slightly better with Jumpstart 2022, so maybe rats is going to move up a tier after this video. Maybe it's going to move up a tier. Yeah, and this is the best rat ever printed. There was basically a standard deck that just revolved around this card at one time, once, once upon a time. I like the Rat Saga. Rat Saga. Such a card exist? No, such the <laughs> does not exist. I don't know what we're talking about here. Okay, so um, outside of Popper, I don't, I don't even know if in Popper if it's like even a tier one deck. So I can't give Rats like a tier, but I think it's fair that we can go give it a little bit of a B tier. It's like a slightly relevant deck. They got a lot of cool, fun stuff going on. Rats community, if I've did you a disservice, I mean you are more than welcome to give me your argument in the comments section. My, you guys are coming out hot with the super chats. They're not good today, but the Dothy equal me- Oh, the Dothy! Dothy! Um, do you know we, that's okay, we just put in Dothy and all the Dothy cards are gonna show up. Yes! This is one of the cards that made me quit magic when I first started playing. Because my friends taught me how to block. How to block with creatures and stuff. And then this guy has Shadow. Dothy Horror can't be blocked by... Oh no, uh... And it can't be blocked by white creatures? What the hell? It already cannot be blocked by 99% of Magic the Gathering. Oh, on top of that, it can't be blocked by white creatures! And look at that hideous art, ugh. I mean, yeah, I know some of you guys, you like the... You like that old style nonsense. I don't. I think this is... This is hideous. Hideous stuff. The Dothys were good at Shadow. They're a shadow creature. Look at that. Three mana, three one shadow. This is basically a true name nemesis of the time, except you could kill it. Or could you? Because you can only kill non black creatures. At least with black removal. So in the mirror, in the Dothy mirror, this guy's true name nemesis. What else? Oh, yeah, this is the new, new hotness. Does anyone play Dothy Tribal, though? I don't think this is all the Dothies, but uh, and there, here we go. We got a new Dothy. Dothies are coming back! That's what I'm telling you here. The Dothies are coming back. Alright, Dothy Voidwalker. <laughs> you could have been here for Rogue, but you're here for the Dothy. Um, I at least heard of the creature type, so we'll give it C. Whoops. So far, this tier list is pretty fair. Pretty, pretty fair. Uh, I gotta get through these super chats, or this is gonna, or I'm gonna, they're gonna, I'm gonna lose them. Okay, Kyle Driver with the super chat. As a commander player, Angel seemed like the most OP in the format I play. <laughs> What's a good Angel here? Angel, right, righteous Angel, I think. Isn't there like, isn't there an Angel called Righteous Angel? Something Angel? A lot of angels in this game. I can't think of any of the good ones right now. Help me chat. What's a good angel? Yeah, travel, travel days, boys and girls. Platinum angel. Okay. You want to go that route? I was thinking of the good ones, but if you want to go with the uh, the janky ones, that's fine with me too. So here's an angel. The seven mana, four, four flying. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. But actually in historic, like I guess there was like life gain angels were like a thing. Righteous, that's what I was looking for. What? Oh, I went, I looked up righteous angel. I should have looked up righteous Valkyrie. Angels have like a little s something going for them. There we go, righteous Valkyrie. White, two generic, two, four flying. Whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, gain can gain you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Crazy stuff. And as long as you have seven or more life, then your starting life total creatures you control get plus two plus two. You know, the main I mean I analyzed angels and the main problem is they don't have many good one drops. And like even if um no, it wasn't Sarah Angel. 
Oh no, it was Sarah Avenger, right? Oh, look at that. Cathed cath Cathedral of Sarah. All your white legends against bends with other legends. See, like, we don't have much for one white, for one one drops. So this is a human monk, sorry. Angels don't have, well, here, here's the Sarah Angel in the millionth art of Sarah Angel. Mini Sarah Angel art. There you go, Sarah Avenger. When you get low on casting costs, a lot of the angels become unplayable. They're just not really all that good. That with the two drop angel that grows is nice. Gaida, Gaida is like the premier angel now of today. Super amazing angel. Great stuff. Yeah, we could we could talk about the tribe and we can like name out cards in that tribe. Anyway, okay, Gaida. You're going to represent angels today. Angels is not terrible, but not great. Like I you know, you know of angels. You heard of it. It's popular. But it's sort of a stinker, right? Like, it's it's still not that super big, like, powerful deck yet. Yet. Just wait, people. They're going to print some amazing angel cards for all the... They know... I, you know what? It's a weird thing for Wizards of the Coast. They don't need to make angels, like, super competitive. They know that they can give you, like, some big... You know, some big flashy... Uh, like seven mana angel or an eight mana angel or give you angel of serenity and 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 you'll and the angel community will be happy so they don't need to push the angels unlike some tribes where the communities just get outright angry we're losing we're dying here we need reinforcements send in the team Get R&D to fix this damn thing. So angels might have trouble being becoming uh, competitive. All right, we got Frosty complete. Noggles are top tier. That's right, Noggles. All right, well, we're going to have to go to the advanced filter for this one. Creature. Noggles. Is there like one creature in existence with this creature type? There is no such thing as the Noggles. Well, you saw it here. N-O-G-G-L-E-S. Is this like some troll or something? Anyway, uh, creature. Unless it's one, it's like just called the Noggles. Okay. Apparently there's something called a Noggle. What's the English name? Noggle Ransacker. It is a no Oh, it's not Noggles. It's Noggle. The Noggle. Okay. Whoops. All right, we got... Are these both the Noggles? Hold on. Okay, let me now... Let's do the advanced search. Got derailed here. Creature Noggle. Oops. Almost did it again. Oops. Oops. What am I doing? Wow, so much effort for this Noggle creature type. I'm putting it like deep. Okay, we have four cards here. The Noggle Bandit. The Noggle Bridge Breaker. The Noggle Hedge Mage. And you can't see it, but this is the Noggle Ransacker. Enters the battlefield. Each player draws two random cards and the discards are card at random. This is ridiculous. <laughs> if, you, if you hear, I... Uh, we got the Mother 3 music out, and uh, Swag says, You searched Majipsy, my total brother. Yes, I did. I looked up the Majipsies. I was looking up also the music. Yeah, so we were bringing on Mother 3 music. Uh, anyway, the Noggle ran... Okay, well, anyway. Hey, 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 hey! Oi! My music is mixed up here. Okay, first let's let's give judgment to the Noggles, which is obviously going to be D tier. This is called this is the I never heard of you. I don't even know who you are tier. I don't even know who you are. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Here, hold on. I'm mixing around my music here for a second. There we go. 
I think I started off with the wrong song. All right, so you know what that means. We've got to talk about our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com, our wonderful sponsors. Huge deal of the week this week. It is not Cyber Monday today, but there is 20% off store-wide. I guess it is still Cyber Monday, even on a Tuesday. Uh, Cyber Monday could run all week for all I care. 24-hour uh, sale, 20% off store-wide. You want to take advantage of that. I mean, this is the one of the biggest deals of the year at Fusion Gaming Online, my place where I buy all my singles, sealed product. I get my sleeves and my deck boxes from here, my favorite local game store. And normally, you'd be able to support the channel and get an additional 5% off with coupon code Nikachu at checkout, but this deal is so big, so insane, at 20% off, it's just gonna sit at 20. You can you can use the coupon code, but if you've missed the big sale, use the coupon code to get 20 to get 5% off all your purchases and support the channel. We're also gonna thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. And if you wanna try to make Noggles work, hey, maybe there is a hidden Noggles deck out there. You never know. You, uh, hey, but you got to experiment with it. And the best way to experiment with is, is with renting the cards. Don't buy these cards. You will waste your money. There's a lot of ideas that go straight into the garbage. But with Mana Traders, when you're renting the cards, you can try things out eternally until it works. And you can support the channel by renting using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore WS2. And now back to back to the creature types. Uh, okay, so I don't. I hope I don't lose my super chats here. You guys like super chat out of the gate super hard. Okay, we got approaching calamity here. Insect tribal, iridescent horn beetle, bloodline predator, scoot swarm. You know, it's very funny that you say this because the creator of Hammer Time, the cre Scoot Swarm. Why can't I find Scoot Swarm? Scoot Swarm. The creator of Hammer Time just made an insect deck. Just made it. So Scoot Swarm, uh, green two generic landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a one one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. And we also have uh, we have Grist. We got the Insect Planeswalker. That's not bad. Not bad at all. That's a tier 1 Planeswalker. Maybe not seeing necessarily play in the Insect decks, but certainly certainly an Insect-like card. When uh, I mean, it's treated like a creature in the, in, the, uh, in the library. And then it's an amazing Planeswalker on the battlefield where you can create 1-1 one, one black, black and green Insect creature tokens. Then you mill a card. And if an Insect card was milled this way, Put a loyalty count on Grist and repeat the process. So you want to fill your deck up with as many insects as possible. I also rate this as one of the most horrifying pictures in all of Magic the Gathering. In my opinion. In my opinion. Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to move the music. Yeah, Crusher Bot's insects. Can we see that? Hold on. Let's see if I can quickly find this. Let's look up uh, the Insect Tribal deck. Pretty sure I can find it pretty easily. From the creator of Hammer Time! Uh, no, that's the Hammer deck. There we go! Can you see it? This is Insects getting its first... Look at this, Vic, look at this run streak. Look at all the winning it's doing. It's got Urza Saga for some reason. It's got the Swarm Yard. So for anyone trying to make Insect Tribal work, I mean, this is how it's done. This thing is, uh, went undefeated. Haywire Might and Hex Parasite and the Brain Maggot. And you know what? Because of all those insects... Hold on, did it even have... Did it even have Grist? Okay, it does have Grist. Okay, so we can use Grist as the, uh, poster, uh poster child on the tier list. Alright, Grist, you made insects. B. Thanks to thanks to Crusherbot, you're like slightly relevant. Maybe still have to be proven, but you're slightly relevant. Alright, what do we got next? We've got uh, the 
Ikaya, Vampires, Knight of Even Ebon Legion. Oh yes, of course. The Vamps. There's a lot of good vampires out there. There's like millions of great vampires. Knight of Ebon Legion doesn't even touch it. We have like Vampire Hex Mage. Which honestly is a little bit awkward to use because great against planeswalkers, but there's no planeswalker to hit. Vampire Hex Mage doesn't really do anything. What else is there? There's, um. Come on, vampire fam. Uh. What is something? Oh, I'll just look up the word vampire. Because most of the vampires have, like, there we go. We got, like, blood throne, blood throne vampire down here. Captivating vampire. I stole a lot of... Oh, a cordial vampire. This is the vampire of all vampires. This is a vamp... Actually, I'm surprised that vampires hasn't become a big thing uh, out of a result of cordial vampire's existence. This is probably one of the more broken creatures that nobody knows about. Because whenever a cordial vampire or another creature dies... Another creature! And it, not necessarily your own. It can be your opponent's. We got the Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. That's right. Oh, and the Va and Nighthawk Scavenger. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. I should just look at Falcon Wrath. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. Absolutely. And then what's it called? Um, Falcon Wrath. I just said Nighthawk. Scavenger, an upgrade to uh, Vampire Nighthawk. Yeah, the vampires have a lot going for it. They've got, they've got some resiliency. Well, what's the vampire Bloodgast? Well, that one is not super popular in vampire decks, but you do have a vampire that's really, really resilient to removal. It dies, it comes back whenever you play a land, so it's good stuff. All right, who's gonna? You're gonna. You're going to represent the vampires, Cordial. You're gonna represent all the vampires. Now, vampires. Has vampires ever won anything? I don't think so. I think it's in that funzy territory of being like, you know, you're a known archetype. You're really popular. You got a lot of good stuff going for you. I got a five zero once with vampires. In fact, I might have got two five zeros with vampires. But uh, even with all that said. No, it hasn't really been building steam or taking off, so. We're looking at this at a competitive tribe. One day, if you guys want to look at them as just popularity, we can do some sort of tier list based on, like, how popular they are. We'll do a big vote for the best tribal deck. But we're just looking, today we're looking at its competitive point of view. All right, now what do we got next? We've got, uh, uh, we've got, what the hell is this? Demons. Demons! Abyssal Persecutor. <laughs> as a tribal deck? Do you have Grizzlebrand in here as well? All right, we got Abyssal Persecutor as one of our, as one of the cards. Black, black, too generic, flying trample. You can't win the game and your opponents can't lose the game. Well, that sort of sucks. So you have to try to kill your Abyssal Persecutor in the end. Grizzlebrand, I know, is a demon. It's like the demon of all demons. I don't know if you run that in the demon tribal deck. Demons, Shadowborn, Apostle is tribe. There we go. <laughs> Vamp has to be better than insects. Well, as of... As of today, hey, look, look at this. This has winning behind it. I would, yes, if you asked me a week ago, if you asked me a week ago, insects would have been like D, or it's like, yeah, definitely D, or F, or G, or even off the board. But as of two days ago, insects now is a C tier deck. Because apparently, some there's some proof in the pudding here. Of, uh, of playability. Shadowborn Apostle, a deck can have any number of cards named Shadowborn Apostle. Sick, sacrifice six uh, creatures named Shadowborn Apostle and search your library for a demon creature card, put onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. Go look for that Grizzle brand, and then from there, I don't know, draw a bunch of Shadowborn Apostles. Oh, Desecration Demon, Desecration Demon.
Yeah, chalice and win. You have one chalice of the void. You, you're gonna get completely blown out with your uh, Shadowborn Apostle deck. Totally forgot what this saw a lot of play at the time. Black, black, two generic for a 6-6 six, six flyer. It proved for six mana, 6-6 six, six flyer wasn't really all that dangerous. We could probably push more four drops. At the beginning of each combat, any any opponent may sack a creature, and if a player does, tap Desecration de cap, tap desecration Demon. Anyway, I didn't know this is a serious tribe, so we're going to put it like with the Dothies. You know, there's a lot of good, there are a lot of good demons out there, I'll admit that. And probably there is quite a few people who has the, who have the jank Shadowborn Apostle deck. That's probably a real thing. Uh, but anyway, we're going to let it rest at the D tier. Alright, next super chat. You guys are running the show here today. A togs are goaded. The OGs know what I'm talking about. Psychotog. People are burning the super chats on all these obscure creature types. This is an ugly Psychotog. I like the original one. This is a much better pick. Why would they change this one? Okay, black, blue, one generic for a one, two. Discard a card from your hand. Psychotog gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And then you can remove cards from your graveyard to uh, remove two of them to also get plus one, plus one until end of turn. But the deal is, like, can you make a tribe out of this? Can we make a tribe out of the Atogs? I mean, maybe there's some... Th so what does the Atog Atog do? The Atog Atog! It's like the Sliver Queen Queen. Sacrifice an Atog. Atog, uh, Atog gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the sacrifice to Atog's power. We got the Aura Atog, but you need like a lot of or enchantments in there to buff this this dude up. The Mega Atog. The Mega Tog. This sounds like some sort of like Power Rangers enemy or weird task force or something. The Mega Tog. Sacrifice an artifact, gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Now, of course, the the Atog, isn't this banned in Popper? Because it's so good. Sack an artifact. It's basically like an affinity card, though. My first real game was against Psychotog. It's probably psyched you out, didn't it? Creatures can get this big? This is crazy! That's it? This is everything? Alright, the Atogs. Atogs can go hang out in the C tier with the Dothies and the Demons. You're not really that good of a tribe. I mean, individually, some of the cards are good, but as a tribe, it sucks. I'm sure someone can sort of make it work. But not really. Not not really, in my opinion. Alright, what do we got here? Uh, we need... Michael Bird, Seaside Haven, and uh, Soyara the Falconer. There's actually a lot of good birds out there. Uh, I know, because I tried to make the bird... I, I actually have a bird deck, believe it or not. Because I like Thieving Magpie, right? So I'm like, I gotta build another Thieving Magpie deck. And th honestly, though, I scrapped the Magpie in the end. There's, uh, so, so I remember, I recognize one card. That you, Seaside Haven? Seaside Haven? It was a cool land. You get tap for one. It sucked that you tap for colorless mana. That was no good. Tap for a colorless, pay a blue, white, and a white. Tap it, sack a bird, draw a card. So in response to our opponent blowing up my creature, or I can do a chum block, I get the sack, and I get some value out of these damn things. Yeah, magpies never forget. Uh, what else? There was... What's the artifact one? Blue, black, 1-1, one, one, death touch, you know. The, it's the original Ice Fang Quaddle. It looks like an ink blot. I can't remember. It's like the bird of all birds, as far as I'm concerned. Thanks so much, Alexander. Baleful Strix. Very, very, very baleful. Baleful Strix. This is like the champion of all the birds. I don't think there's a better bird than this bird. Oh, no, maybe the uh, Squadron Hawk. 
Maybe this is also an equally popular bird. Enters the battlefield and may search your library for up to three cards named Squadron Hawk. That actually I've seen a lot of play as well. But I think this is just a more powerful card. I love you birds, but uh, you're like... You're definitely C tier. F us. We haven't like we haven't gotten any of the big ones. All right, with the super chats taken over. Uh, we've got scarecrows, Reaper King. Ugh, you know it's so funny. So many people love scarecrows. How many scarecrows are really in this game, though? I swear there's like only two. Okay, hold on. Creature type. Scarecrow. Oh, there's a lot of scarecrows. I stand, I stand corrected. There's a lot of scarecrows in this game. Reaper King being the most uh, popular. All right, so other scarecrow creatures you control get plus one, plus one. It's a six, six creature. And whenever a scarecrow comes into play under your control, destroy target permanent. Well, now I see the payoff to this thing. This thing is nuts. This is just crazy. Yeah, I mean, this is way more. I, I thought like, I thought they were using like shapeshifters and stuff to enable this guy. This is actually, a, there's a lot of Scarecrows. I know a lot of people that tried to make Reaper King decks, and now I understand how they did it. Maybe it sucks for Commander, because you can only have one card, but. All right, Reaper King. I can put you. I'm still gonna put you in the C tier. You're a mopey deck. You don't have a lot of playables. Every every deck is a is a land tribal. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat. Every deck is a land tribal in some way. Well, there is literally the lands deck, and that's like a trot. You could consider that a tribal deck. Uh, all right, let's look at some non uh, super chats. Uh, <laughs> are there any like we we haven't even hit any of the most popular tribes? We have another super chat. All right, we've got JD with the super chat. How about some fogs and horrors like the Gitrog monster? Oh, you mean horrors? Horrors. Gitrog monster. Well, what is the more popular tribe? The the monster or the frog? I don't think I don't think frogs are very popular. Horror might be. I think there are quite a few horrors in this game. Anyway, I'm gonna move through this quickly because I I've never heard of either of them being like a a tribal deck So instantly D tier fastest D tier of my life. I don't even know you. I never heard of you Okay, here we go. Let's look at Eldrazi. Eldrazi actually are Busted as hell. All right, so thought not seer now. This is a tribe that has Devastated modern, devastated legacy because of like lands like Eldrazi Temple. So they get to, they get to play with soul lands, and then uh, in legacy or like the more eternal formats, they get access to Eldrazi Temple. Um, Eldrazi. Well, they get like uh, ancient tomb, city of traitors. And so, like, these really powerful Eldrazi that, uh, you know, things like uh, uh, Thought. No, not, sorry. Reality Smasher. So, there's a lot of, like, cheap Eldrazi that are relatively easy to cast. Ivugan, that was the big one. Ivugan is another big land. And now, not to mention, you know, you could be a little bit more on the chunkier side in a more casual format with Emrakul. Like, Emrakul's banned for a reason. And make no mistake, if you could, you would play Emrakul Trot. You would play Eldrazi Tribal with Emrakul and, you know, Ulamog and all those other big baddies. This is, hands down, one of the most powerful tribes ever. It was a little janky on the, uh, on the start, and then they made the cheap ones, like Eldrazi Mimic. Just all these these cheap Eldrazi that could easily be played off of Soul Lands, and I of Ugin made it even worse because I of Ugin says you know the Eldrazi spells cost two less to cast. And if you have a bunch of two mana cards, you could just play them out for free. Specifically, the Eldrazi Mimic. 
Um, uh, Emrakul isn't banned. It's banned in uh, Commander. You want you want to look? Emrakul. See, banned in Commander. I'm just saying. Hey, we got we got to evaluate these uh, across all the formats. We got to evaluate based on all the formats out there. And for that, the Eldrazi are S tier. This is no doubt in my mind that this is one of the better tribes ever in existence in the history of Magic the Gathering. All right, we got our first S here. We got the Iron Warlock. Elves with Elvish Archdruid leading the horde. You love the Elvish Archdruid. The Elvish Archdruid, uh, green, green, one generic, two, two. Other elf creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Add a green for each elf you control. They also got, what, uh, Heritage Druid? One of the most busted elves ever in the history of elf decks. One green, one, one. Tap three untapped elves you control and add triple green to your mana pool. This is a very relevant ability. Because as you just play elves, and if you can draw more of them, you can just spew them onto the battlefield and keep just keep chaining those elves, keep playing the elves, tap them for mana. No summoning sickness here. It like basically breaks the summoning sickness rule. I mean, that's the whole point of Lanor elves. All right, you have this Lanor elf. Oh my god, so many Lanor, El Lanor stuff. Uh, Lanor elves, you got the one, one for one. Which also is pretty relevant to a lot of decks. I mean, the, mo what, the Mono Green Devotion deck, I believe, in Pioneer also plays Lanor Elves. Easily one of the most relevant uh, creature types. And then they gave it, like, this big buff recently. Well, what's that stupid card that one green makes their all their stuff uncounterable, and for, like, six mana, everything becomes a dinosaur? I can't remember what the, the elf was called. And of course, you know, this is one of the best um, glimpse of nature decks. I mean, this is this card is banned because of elves. Not because of affinity, not because of let's, any other random deck, because of elves. Whenever you play a creature this turn, draw a card. And between Heritage Druid and this thing, you could draw your entire deck and put some unsurmountable amount of power on the battlefield. Allosaurus Shepherd. I'll just look up the Shepherd. I don't know how to spell Allosaurus. There we go. Allosaurus Shepherd. The spell can't be countered. Green spells you control can't be countered. Until end of turn, each elf creature you control has base power and toughness 5-5. Five, five, and it becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other types. Okay, where's, where's Lanor Elf? Let's get back on the screen here. There we go. You're going to represent all the elves. Lanor Elf, the elves, are undoubtedly one of the S-tier tribes. It's really, and really good in casual as well. So really powerful for eternal formats. Uh, seen a lot of, I think it's even seen a lot of standard play, but also seen a lot of play, uh, anyway, it's just a consistent staple of Magic the Gathering. Also sees a lot of play in Popper. Strong deck in Popper. Okay, we got uh, Anthrax Crab here. I'm gonna give you this one. I don't know how you would count this, but sea monsters, leviathans, kraken, octopus, and serpents. It's not a tribe. You're like, yeah, that's like an amalgamation of tribes because those are all separate. Like you, then you'd add merfolk and all those merfolk and fish and stuff like that. Sorry, that you gotta pick one of them. We could go with leviathan though. I think that's a popular one. Love, 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 Leviathan. Did I spell Leviathan right? Maybe not. There we go. There's the original. Yeah, there. Your super chat didn't go to waste. Leviathans are terrible. Octopuses are not bad though. They're not bad. Most Leviathans are pretty garbage, though. Just like the original Leviathan. There we go. Hope you like your super chat. With Morophon, everything can be a tribal deck. That's correct. Morophon. Uh, what is Morophon? Morophon. Oh, shapesh shapeshifter tribal. 
Yes, but when everything's tribal, nothing is tribal. Shapeshifters. Okay, I think shapeshifters is one of those sort of popular tribes that people like sort of make work, but not really. So we can put this in C tier. There we go. The shapeshifters are around. I mean, basically, like you just. It's like a shapeshifter deck, and then some people will like throw in like here's a sliver here, and here's a here's a one one merfolk here to like give all their shapeshifters the abilities and stuff. It happens. I didn't miss any of your super chats, did I? No, I think I got them all. Oh, we have like a bunch of weird suggestions here. All right, we've got uh, all <laughs> lands. Okay, this is technically not a tribe. <laughs> Technically not a tribe, Echoes. Yeah, lands, Tabernacle, Dark Depths, Thespian Stage. I mean, there is a land deck, but it is not technically not a creature type. It is a land type. Humans! Ah, the humans with your champion of the parish. Your reflector mage. Your Thalia, guardian of Thraben. This is an insane... This is a very funny creature type because, um... Uh... What, we can't find Thalia for some reason? It's a funny creature type because humans have been around for a while. It's, it's like, the most popular creature type of all creature types. Because everything's like a human. You know, the whole multiverse just biased towards the humans, not the other creature types. It's basically the story of the humans here. And uh, there's human soldiers, human wizards... Human, human this, human that, human artificer. So humans are like super, super common. And with a lot of humans, you get a lot of good ones. You got meddling mage, human rogues. So a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of humans running around. So now have humans done everything? Well, humans like dominated mo the modern format for like a clear two years. I think also moderns, ma sorry, uh, humans made their way into legacy when Rick, what's called Rick and let's just look up Rick. How many Ricks are there in this game? Okay, apparently there's a lot of Ricks. There we go, Rick, steadfast leader. That made a bit of a humans uh, deck in legacy. Humans also sees play in pioneer right now, so there are quite a few. There's quite a few humans out there. You know what, Rick? You can represent the humans. But it's Day in the Sun was really hot. Uh, in only modern, I think. So, no, do you know what? It has two tier one. It had two tier one decks. It was tier one in two formats for a very large period of time. So we can make this S tier. I think that's fair. Your tier one and two two decks, and you can make like you easily can be built around for commander. Gavin Rook says, uh, what about the, the bears? The bears. What kind of bear? Like, uh, grizzly bear? <laughs> well, what, okay, what is the ultimate grizzly of all grizzly bears? There's like a super grizzly bear. I can't remember what the grizzly bear is called, though. Something of all bears. There's like a magical grizzly bear. The bears. Creature. Bear. Ayula. Okay, you guys got it before I did. Ayula. Ayula, you do great. You're a great bear. Whenever another bear enters the battlefield and you control, choose one. Put two counters on target bear. Target bear you control fights target creature you don't control. Anyway, bears suck, though. I will admit, bears are not really all that good, even with all the support they've been given recently. I'm gonna put them in the C tier. Actually, I should just put them in the D tier, to be honest. I really don't- they, I mean, they need way more support than Ayula. Ayula is like the, the beginning of them maybe moving into the D tier, but I think at the moment, bears just have to be D tier. Bears don't have anything going for them. They're bears for crying out loud! They're two twos for two for the most part. All right, we got serp. Okay, so we, Anthrax Crab says serpents. We're gonna commit to serpents. 
What's a good serpent? Okay, I'm gonna see if I recognize any of these serpents before. Uh, nope. I don't know any of these serpents. Someone can build a whole deck out of these, though. I will admit that. If you, oh, there we go. There we go. There's a serpent. That's uh, that's a familiar face. Straight to D tier. I knew it. If you name me octopuses, it's going there too. Uh, all right, what do we got next? Um, is sand a tribal? I don't think sand is a tri is a creature creature type. That's so weird. Ah, slivers. Slivery, slivery, slivery stuff. Okay, slivers. Uh, what's a hibernation sliver? There are some good slivers in this game. This is a very tricky sliver. All slivers have pay to life return this permit to its owner's hand. That's a fantastic card. Oh, you try to kill my creature? Well, boing! Goes right back to my hand. And then they got the crystalline sliver. This card is nuts. And I think they need to reprint this card into modern. Otherwise, the slivers have no chance against all the removal. They reprint this card into modern slivers is t like it is like S tier or like overnight in, in that format. Or tier one. It's insane, this card. The number of times I've seen people cuss at crystalline sliver. Absolutely. It's a cuss it's cuss worthy. All slivers have shroud? All of them. And then you can't get rid of them. I mean you have to be I mean you can still kill them with sweepers and stuff. But then even if you try to sweep them away, the hibernation sliver will bounce them back to hand, right? The hibernation sliver will bounce them back to hand. So, um, what other good slivers are there? Well, I mean, they got, uh, what's it called? Uh, in Popper, they've got some good ones over there. Actually, I'll just look up sliver. Let's just look at, we got acidic sliver. All slivers have pay two. This permit deals two damage to our creature or player. So you can sack your slivers. We got, uh... Cloud Shredders. This is actually a good one. White, red for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, slivers you control have flying and haste. You get both of them. You got the evasion. Then we got, isn't there just something called, oh, it was Glade Rider Sliver. All slivers you control have flying. Good one drop. A harmonic Sliver is a house. Whenever this permanent enters the battlefield, to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So if you got artifacts or enchantments, say goodbye to all of them. And then we got the Megantic Sorry, no. Mangantic Sliver sucks. It's too expensive. Mat muscle Sliver. That's what I was looking for. All Slivers get plus one, plus one. The Necrotic Sliver. All Slivers have pay three. Sacrifice this permit. Destroy target permanent. So, um, Slivers used to be a deck in Legacy. Now it's not so much anymore. I don't know why it's not really all that competitive. But it's an incredible commander deck. And also the, um, but it is still a popper deck. So it's still around. It's still a popper deck. And for the pop for just just for the popper fans, we'll take a picture of the muted muscle sliver. But where do I want to put it? It's not like it's never been like overly dominating of a deck. It's just one of those decks that are sort of around. So I'll put it in the A tier. Really good deck though. Really good deck. All right, do we have any? We've got another. S <laughs> I run slivers, but f them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hates his own tribe. Gavin Rook says, "Why don't we look at Minotaurs with such iconic cards like Didgeridoo?" Yeah, I know Minotaurs are terrible. The only thing Minotaurs has going for it is basically Didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. The reason Didgeridoo has not ex look at it, it's fourteen dollars. Okay, let's read Didgeridoo. One for one mana. We pay three. You can put a Minotaur permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. You basically show and tell things at instant speed whenever you want, and at and etern as for as many times as you want for Minotaurs. The card's worth fourteen dollars because we don't have anything good to put into play. We have nothing. Absolutely nothing to put into play. 
So Minotaurs go to the D tier. Is rogues a creature type? I mean, it is a creature type. What's a good rogue out there? True name nemesis. I don't know. Is there like a cohesive archetype made around uh, rogues? I could see it. I could see it happen. I only know the merfolk rogues. I know uh, true name nemesis. I know thieving skydiver. I don't know any other rogues outside of this. We're going to look up the rogue deck. The rogue tribal. Rogue tribal was strong and standard. Well, that's, it's got, well, then it's got a little bit going for it. Well, there's a lot of... Ooh. There are, you know what I'll say? Rogue decks have had, like, incredibly... There's, like, have been some incredibly good rogues in Magic the Gathering over the years. But I don't know if there's, like, a cohesive rogue tribal deck. Like, individual cards are, like, really... Like, here's a rogue, Blighted Agent, but would you put Blighted Agent in your rogue deck? Rogues have a legit archetype in historic... Explore and historic... Oh, really? I have not been around. How good? How good is the deck? Like, there, it's just a bunch of random... Oh, this is a rogue? There are good rogues out there. Oh, Cash Raiders for uh, anybody who knows. You'd have to be a real OG of the channel. Okay, I don't... I honestly don't know the competitive viability of this deck. So, uh, I will assume that it is B-tier worthy. There are a lot of good rogue creatures out there. Alright, so Beanpot agrees with me. We need dragons, says Gustavo. Did I miss any super chats here? Do you know what? Before the dragons, we gotta, we gotta talk Thopter. We gotta go with Thopter. I'm thinking of trying to build a Thopter tribal deck. What's it? What's one Thopter? Um, Ornithopter? Is that a Thopter? It is a Thopter. I don't know any good Thopters though, to be honest. Creature Thopter. I imagine it would be relatively okay because it would be just an artifact deck, right? Okay, we have Ornithopter, we have the Liberator, Urza, Battle Thopter. Pilgrim's Eye is not bad. Okay, I forget it. There's just not enough Thopters out here. Alright, Thopt Ornithopter, you were like one of the best. You're one of the best creatures in Magic the Gathering, but as a tribe, you're a stinker. We're gonna quit this. Squeeze it right there near it next to the Minotaur in the D tier. Where you belong. We're running out of room on the D tier. Alright, let's look at Dragon. <laughs> we didn't even cover any of the good dra the good cre the people are gonna complain. Like we didn't talk about any of the good the good tiers. Or like the Look how empty this is. At like S tier. Completely empty. Okay, let's talk dragons. What are some good dragons out there? I guess I could just look up dragon. Dragon's Rage Channeler. There's millions of good dragons. What's it called? Dragon, uh... Silumgar something. There we go. Dragon Lord Silumgar. Gold Span Dragon. Give me, give me your power. Shivan Dragon. Isn't that a pretty garbage dragon by today's standards? Tiamat. We've got Tiamat. Tiamat is an amazing dragon. Uh, how many versions of... What is, like, what is the stupid main, main dragon of all the dragons? God Tribal. Tiamat Svelun. Well, well, that's the... Stop trolling around here! Okay, uh, what is the main antagonist of Magic the Gathering, or one of the main antagonists? Aren't we missing, aren't we missing him? The Sprite Dragon is, on, is an all-star nerd, that's right! Sprite Dragon. 
Nicol Bolas is a dragon. Yeah, Bolas. Here, let's look up what's, what's one of the better Boluses. There we go. Uh, oh, it's mostly he's mostly a planeswalker though. Oh, but he's sometimes a creature. There we go. That's a dragon. He's an elder dragon. How could we forget the dragons? I mean, dragons are not like a tier competitive deck though, so it's going to be in the B tier. People, it's one of the it's one of the favorites. It's a fan favorite out there. It's a fan favorite. Okay, goblins! Thank thank God somebody remembered like the real tribes out there. Cranko mob boss, not okay, well, yeah, Cranko's seen play. Cranko's actually seen play in the competitive uh goblin builds. Cranko mob boss, create X11 green creature tokens where X is the number of uh goblins you control. Uh what else we got? We have Mog Mog something. What's the one? Not Mog Fanatic. What's the goblin that gives you all the mana? Oh, Muxus is insane. Mux Muxus, Goblin Grandee. Red, red, four generic, four, four. Enters the battlefield. Reveal the top six cards of your library and put all goblin creature cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them onto the battlefield. And whenever Muxus attacks, as if it needed another ability, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other goblin you control. Oh, I was thinking of Skirk Prospector. So goblins has been, uh, and then between Skirk Prospector and we now have, um, now what's the, the two mana combo goblin? Conspicuous Snoop is what I was thinking of. Conspicuous Snoop. Uh, Goblins has won many tournaments. It is actually even relevant in Vintage. It is, uh, has been relevant in Legacy for a very long history of time. It's been sort of mopey and modern for a long time, but now it is pretty competitive. Squee Goblin to mob. Two thumbs down. That is a pretty garbage Goblin. So anyway, uh, yeah, we, this is definitely... And it's now, it's like such a combo-heavy deck or synergy-based deck. And it dominated, what, Historic for like a good chunk of time? So Goblins is an S-tier. S-tier. Tribe. The Blue Bomber! Did we get zombies? If we did time, we did zombies. It was one of the first ones. But thank you so much for the Super Chat Blue Bomber. It was a beautiful A-tier. Beautiful A-tier tribe. Why not Merfolk yet? Yeah, why not Merfolk yet? Because nobody, because the Super Chats don't want to say Merfolk. Lord of Atlantis. All right, we got, yeah. <laughs> How could this be a Nikachu stream without Merfolk? I agree. All right, we got, we're going to, we're going to look over Merfolk. It's about time we talk about Merfolk. Yeah, it is about time that we talk about Merfolk. All right, Lord of Atlantis, uh, Hex Catcher. So, okay, Merfolk. Merfolk has been one of these tribes that is like, has been like, how can I put it, B tier worthy for a very long time because it is like a very beloved tribe, but always on the fringe of being like good in any format that it's in. Now, it has won the Vintage Championship before, and it used to be like a pretty good deck in Legacy. But Merfolk seems to have this problem where where it gets too when it gets good enough it gets like pushed down a peg and especially like it has like a weird cannibalizing effect like the mirror match is just awful to play against it's hard to get an edge in the mirror match because one side could just completely thrash the other side depending who draws too many Lord of Atlantises who has Island Walk who doesn't and like you don't have a whole lot of control over these things. Uh, that being said, like hey now Merfolk has Merfolk has won Grand Prix. It has won the Vintage Championships. It has access to True Name Nemesis. In Legacy, it has some deep finishes. Where's True Name? There's a True Name Nemesis. And recently, Merfolk is on the rise. Big time on the rise in Modern. Uh, I don't think it's in the rise at all. In explore oh, no I think it, it was it, it was like a little bit of a thing in historic for a little while but not a really big one so uh, for that Merfolk is an a tier deck and I, if it can sit if it can get competitive and then stay there for like I don't know six months we could get to s tier 
but I think objectively it's just an A tier deck. It is a good deck, hard to play. Uh, it's better than, it's, you know, it's not better than this casual stuff down here, but it's not good enough to be consistently, like, a super big deck. Okay, so, um, are we missing, okay, I gotta, we gotta extend this show. Okay, we're gonna make the show a little bit longer today, because we, we're missing a lot of, uh, really big creature types here. Is there any other super chats I missed? No, there's not. Fairies, I like that one. Like the fairy, I like the fey. Spell, stutter, sprite. You know I like this. You know I like the fairies actually because of uh, Popper. Huge Popper fan. Spell, stutter, spirit. No sprite. There we go. Now I'm going to judge it based on fairy tribal, not fairy control, because there are a lot of people out there like, hey, I got like. Two spell starter sprites in my deck and one bitter blossom in a blue black control shell. That's a spirits deck, right? No, I don't consider that spirits. Yeah, you got muta vaults in there. That still don't count. It don't count to me. But spell starter sprite uh, still sees play. We got fairy miscreant for good measure. Enters the battlefield. If you control another creature named fairy miscreant, we draw a card. Chain these things together. Oh, there's some really good fairies out there. We got Vendillion Click. It's actually a pretty relevant card right now. Very relevant card, I think, in modern. I mean, pretty weak to Ren and Six, but... Pretty decent versus elemental decks, because you can see what's in their hand and then, like, take away, like, their Fury. Or take away the red card that they would use to, to play their Fury for free. So, um... Now, fairies has had a long history of domination. It dominated standard. It dominated Popper. It what else did it dominate? Did it dominate Legacy? Never really dominated Modern, that's for sure. I don't know. I don't know if it ever saw a super strong a super strong play in Legacy. Brazen Bar, yeah, Brazen Bar is a great one. We're gonna get the nice image. I like this one. The Boss Fairy? Is there something called the Boss Fairy? Boss, I'm the boss. I'm the boss here. Nah, Fae has never been a good legacy deck, but it, it did exist for a while. I miss Fairies in Modern. We'll play it. I will admit, Fairies look pretty weak in the face of, like, you know, Fury and stuff. So, not gonna do very well over there. Una? That's the Baos? Queen of the Fae? Okay, this is for the commander players out there. You got a lot of good commander playables here. Una, Queen of the Fae, flying 5-5. Five, five. Choose a color. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. Um, for each card uh, of the chosen color exiled this way, create a 1-1 one, one blue and black fairy rogue creature token with flying. I have to admit, this card sucks. Is there another, not, is there not another like big one? Sign of Una is a great card. Flash flying, they all get plus one, plus one, and your, your uh, fairies have shroud. Uh, what else are there? There's like a lot. There are other. There's a lot of good fairies out there. What else? They came out in Eldrain. They dropped some goodies on us, like the Fae of Wishes. You could look for a non creature card you own from outside the game. What else is there? Fairy Miscreant, Fairy Macabre. Great cyborg card. Fairy Seer. Now that I look at it, there's like not a whole lot of great. Oh, the hypnotic sprite. I'm a huge fan. This is a little bit clunky, unfortunately. Unfortunately, for two mana, a two one creature sort of sucks. But I like that you've got this mesmeric glare. You can counter uh, targets. You can counter spells three or less for three mana. So you got a little stuff. Yeah, Cloud of Fairies is banned and popper. Too strong. Too strong. Oh, and then there's the Mistbind Clique, which most people are scared of, which is but is not very good anymore. Fly, flash flying champion of fairy when a fairy is championed with misbind click tap all lands target player controls really disgusting if you can get that combo off anyway there's a lot of fairies out there so um 
I will say, between being a huge fan favorite... Oh my god, and it was also part of a combo. Hold on, where's uh, Spell Starter Sprite? There's Spell Starter Sprite. I guess... I don't know where to put this. I, I sort of want to put Fairies as S tier because of its stranglehold on Popper for an insanely long period of time. But maybe it just belongs in A tier because it's not particularly relevant right now. And like it's only I don't like to give too much effort to its time in the sun in uh, in in standard. But if uh, fairies could become like a big powerhouse in popper again, I think we could see it as S tier. But like it moves up and down in popper all the time. It's A tier in other formats, but S tier in popper. Okay, but we're gonna weigh it down. We gotta weigh it down in like overall. In the formats and in overall I think uh, we can put it a tier safe a tier is that fair fairies players I think it's fair Josh with the shrine tribal what the hell is this well you super chatted so we go look at it I thought this is an enchantment there are a few creatures with shrine and what is it all based around this big thing? Go Shintai of Life's Origin. Return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And whenever Go Shintai of Life's Origin or another non-token shrine enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one colorless shrine enchanter creature token. This goes in. I've never heard of you, Pile. I never heard of you. Your hangout with the elf, the berserkers, the berserker shrine. You get to hang out with the berserkers. Werewolves. Okay, let's do. Uh, let's. Oh, we'll do one of them. We'll do spirits. I think that's a huge fan favorite. Huge fan favorite. All right, spirits. What do we got going for spirit? We got the mausoleum wander. Mausoleum. There we go. Mausoleum wander. One of the best blue cre one blue creatures of all time. Have to admit, one of the best one blue creatures of all time. Flying whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under your control, gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Beefing it up, buffing it up, so you can attack for more. And you can sack it. Counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays X, where X is Mons Liam Wanderer's power. This, I mean, this is, uh, what else do they got? They got the Spell Queller, which beats Supreme Verdict. It's one of the rare cards that can beat Supreme Verdict. Where you're exiling spells, uh, converted mat cost four or less when it enters the battlefield. Exile that spell until it leaves the battlefield. Still has flash, still has flying. Incredible card. Rattle chains. Yeah, I see you. Great card for flashing in and protecting your creatures. Uh, selfless spirit. What's like a really good, what's a good spirit commander? Or oh, maybe even Kira. Kira Great Glass. <laughs> Just as I was asking, maybe Kira is like... No, I guess Kira can't be your commander. It needs to be a blue-white one. Kira's been doing the Lord's work for almost twice as long as I've been playing Magic. Uh, ooh, Skyclave Apparition is busted. Skyclave Apparition. So, uh, Spirits has been super relevant in Modern. Won multiple Grand Prix. Uh, made many top eight made many top eight finishes also it has been a house in pioneer even relevant right now as both blue white and mono blue spirits is millis uh millicent a very is that a is that a commander and it's still very relevant in pioneer right now still putting up uh top eight finishes blue white five generic god this sucks 4-4 four, four, Legendary Spirit Soldier. This spell costs one less to cast for each spirit you control. Okay, well, that's better. Uh, flying. Whenever Millicent Restless Rev Revenant or another non-token spirit you control dies or deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one white, white, one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Not bad! I might have went the Geist of Saint Trapped route because it's just easy to cast, but I guess that sucks as a commander because the commander damage is so puny and small. Miguel likes going banned for the Coco. It's true, just won a tournament this week with Mono Blue. Congratulations! I love that Mono Blue deck. I love it. I love it. So, um, 
Uh, anyway, spirits is like super relevant right now and super relevant historically. And also, like, just the, the individual cards see play, sees play in, like, other decks, like Spell Queller. And for that, I can give it S tier. Still pretty relevant right now. A little mopey and... A little mopey and modern right now, but I think it's a pretty good S tier. I think it's an S tier tribe. Alright, okay, what else do we got? Elementals! This is actually a pretty busted tribe. <laughs> What are the elements? Like, I mean, the elementals deck just basically build themselves right now. Omnath. Omnath, Locus of Creation. Uh, Fury. I hate looking for Fury on Scryfall. Because there's a lot of cards with Fury in its name. Uh, what else? Um, Solitude. What is that elemental that is... Elemental's ETB... You, like, look at the top card of your library. Put onto the... Oh, Risen Reef. There we go. Thank you so much. You answered before you even asked the question. Pretty relevant elemental. And there you're, there's your elemental deck. And it's terrorizing everything. Now, if now you could stop there and just have this mid-range... Elemental deck, but some people will go a little a little bit further and hey, no, we need a more hardcore elemental deck with the Flamekin Harbinger Which also is pretty busted. I mean, it's I mean, it's a tutor, right? It's like mystical tutor for creatures a red 1-1 one, one. enters the battlefield You may search your library for an elemental card reveal it and shuffle your library and put that card on top of it Is ball lightning an elemental? I guess so It's pretty crappy elemental though then there's a lightning skelemental. If you like to play for funsies. I'm sure there's like a lot of elementals for like the... Is Omnath like the elemental to play for commander? Because then you can't play with this elemental. Or what is like the ultimate commander elemental? Elementals is absolutely busto. One creator even played it in vintage. Oh my god. What about Uro? Is Uro an elemental? What is Uro? Totally for Uro. Oh no, it's a Titan, probably. Oh, it's an Elder Giant. Came from the Earth. So for all I knew, it was an elemental. Spark Trooper. All these garbage. These garbage. Uh... Okay, I'll look at Spark Trooper. Spark Trooper, Elemental Soldier. Yeah, just wait for five color Omnath. Just wait. It's coming around the corner. Thunderkin Awakener. All right, well, okay, so Elementals, no matter how you want to play this one, is. Well, let's get the. Let's get Uro here. No, no matter how you want to cut it, right now it is like one of like the hardest decks to deal with in. In, uh, what's it called, uh, in Modern. I don't know how well it does outside of that. I'm sure it's, like, a pretty popular deck in Commander. But just for its, like, like Modern existence, is definitely S tier. Will with the Shamans! Was there a Super Chat that I missed? No. I think we got it. What are your favorite Shamans? Oh, man, where's, uh... Shamans are easily fun. All right, spit out your shamans. I missed yours. Oh, we're gonna look at. Uh, I will look. F oh, they're archers. Archers is underrated. Okay, I'll just quickly give this the. I don't. I have no idea what archers you're talking about. Uh. I mean, maybe... Okay, I'll quickly... Let's see. How many are good archers are there? If I can recognize, like, five creatures, then I'll I'll put it up above D tier. I'm not done yet. We're not done. This is this might end up being, a, like, a pretty long... I think we're going to have to end this coffee in MTG somewhere, somewhere. I need to recognize... What is this probably called? Archer? Need to recognize five archers. I don't know any of these. 
Never seen him before. I don't know any of these archers. Well, I saw enough. Reach death touch. Whenever an another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. I imagine this is probably a very funzy. Okay, I'll give I'll give it the C tier. I imagine there's like a lot of funzy stuff in here for commander, but nothing like really competitive. Okay, what do we've got for the fauna shaman? We got let's name our shamans. The fauna fa fauna shaman is actually one of the worst shamans. Because, like, it, it doesn't have any ETB. The best shamans are the ones with ETBs. Harmonic Prodigy. That is a busted card. Harmonic Prodigy for sure. For show. And then Burning Tree Emissary is a busted one. Hell, you don't even need to be in shamans to play Burning Tree Emissary. So, like, the deal is, things like Harmonic Prodigy will double the triggers of the Shamans and Wizards. So, like, when Burning Tree Emissary enters the battlefield, you don't get two mana, you get four mana. It's really disgusting. Yeah, Seize and Pyromancer, and then you'd get, like, you'd draw, like, four cards. Seize and Pyromancer. Well, I guess you have to discard your first hand as well, unless you can play it in response. Seize and Pyromancer is a good one. Then there was the, uh, what's it called? The Blood... What is the stupid card called? A Deathrite Shaman! Is that- is it? It's a Shaman! It's a Shaman! That's right! No ETB, but it's damn good. I would put that in my Shaman deck if it's legal. Unfortunately, banned in a lot of formats. Burning Tree Shaman, that's the- makes it tribal. Burning Tree and Harmonic is amazing. Fulminator Mage is a good one. So shamans got shamans have something going on for it, but it's never been competitive. It's just sort of like it can do. It does some like janky busted stuff. So we'll put it in the uh, B tier. Okay, I I feel like we have not gone through all the the tribes, but we went through a lot of them. We went through a lot of them. What are we missing here? If we're missing some tribes, you let us all know in the comments section below. Maybe we'll make a part two of this. Uh, and incl we include all the shaman, or sorry, all the tribes that we didn't get uh, this time around. But anyway, I can't do this for forever. We can't go. It, 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 at some point, the show has to end, and it's going to end right now. Well, thank you. Hey, do you disagree with this tier list? You let us know your changes in the comments section below. We do this, by the way, Monday to Friday, 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. So be there or be square. Thank you very much, everyone, for the super chats. Everyone who are who's a member of the channel or a patron, if you want to become a member or a patron, links to that in the description below. But thank you so much to all of you for showing up this morning. Because without all of you, I got no show. Uh, sad. The there is going to be a huge where I know the werewolves. Oh, it looks like we missed out on all the dogs. The doggo fam is very disappointed. Um, and the fungi. All right, we'll have to do this again sometime to get all the, the tier list, the, all the tribes that we missed. There was definitely a lot of tribes out there, huge fan favorites. So, but uh, thank you very much for joining me today. And so as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up those coffees so that we can keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next.